Welcome to part two of this Football Manager 2019 experiment where I have flipped all of the English leagues around. So I put the real life English Premier League and Championship teams into the Vanarama National League North and South and all the other leagues were mirrored as well. If you missed part one, please go and check that out first. I uploaded that earlier today. And in this part two, we're going to holiday another three seasons to see what has happened to the landscape of English football. If you enjoy this video and want more parts, please hit that like button. It'd be very much appreciated. Just lets me know that you're enjoying the series and I will be willing to continue for as long as you want me to continue. So in part one, we saw Alfreton win the first Premier League title, but they have failed to hold on to the Premier League trophy with newly promoted Chester winning the league one point ahead of newly promoted Billa Rookie Town. Really exceptional stuff from both those teams. Alfreton all the way down in sixth place. With East Thurrock, Ultranham and Eastbourne getting relegated, all three teams having very poor seasons. Eastbourne only won four games. I just absolutely love this experiment. It's why I've done it every year because it's just so interesting. And the transfers that we see as well are really interesting. But we'll have a look into some of these teams. Firstly, I'm going to look at Alfreton just to see what's happened to them. So this is their squad. You can see I've got this squad uh, squad view, which is quite... In you can have these um, dividers now. So I did actually release a video about my squad view if you want to check that out but let's have a look at how they got on because remember champions league football uh, as you can see they were in the same group as napoli young boys and they had it wasn't the hardest group in the world but as you would expect they did struggle we'll have a look at the champions league in a bit more detail in a second actually they lost the charity shield by the way against chelsea 5 0 because uh, Chelsea won, what well, they obviously won the FA Cup and that's why they took them on. But the quality difference is still huge. I'm just going to scroll down. So FA Cup, they went out in the third round against St. Albans. League Cup, how did they do in the League Cup? They lost against Arsenal 5-0 in the fourth round. But what's, what about their transfers? How much money did they get? So they only spent £1.2 million despite getting Champions League football. Perhaps that money hasn't quite filtered through yet. I reckon in the next season, they will possibly spend more money because in previous experiments we have seen the teams eventually spend lots of money on big players but as you can see they've actually signed players from sort of real life championship league one league two teams at the moment so that's the quality in this league and they managed to finish sixth with this team as well so what did Chester do to finish top maybe they spent some money some of that championship winning money uh did they did they win the championship I think they did actually. Oh, second, second in the championship. Billy Rookie were first, weren't they? So what did they spend? So they spent 9.25 million pounds. So they spent a lot more money to try and stay up, but they <laughs> they did more than stay up. They went on to win the league because their quality was just so much better. They signed Lee Casimol from Sunderland, Harrison Reed from Southampton, Jay Adams from Birmingham, Solly March, some good players. Decent players, obviously they wouldn't win the Premier League in real life, but because of the quality of the rest of the league, they were able to get their hands on the Premier League trophy. Are they rich? They are rich. So they are already rich because of getting promoted from the Championship. And Billericay Town already, I mean, they've, they've got finances anyway, haven't they? So let's have a look to see who they... £13.25 million. So they'd be disappointed not to win the league. They signed Sam Johnston from West Brom. Andre Wisdom from Derby County. Anita from Stoke. Some interesting signings there. But it wasn't good enough to get them the league title. Only one point off Chester, though. They, they're also a rich team, as you can see there. Stockport also managed to get a Champions League place. Well, well done to them and Geasley. And then Nuneaton qualified for the Europa League. So it looks like none of these teams managed to win the league or FA Cup. It's probably going to be the real-life Premier League teams once again winning those competitions. Let's have a quick look at Eastbourne. Sorry state of affairs for them this season. Despite having Premier League TV money, they only spent 51k. I don't know if the TV money has filtered through yet. I guess I don't know. In theory, they should have TV money. Let's look at their. They're rich, so they definitely have TV money because I think all of these teams are rich, but they just haven't spent it. They don't know how to spend it. The reputation of these teams are really low. Eventually, they will increase, I suppose, over time, and they will be able to sign better quality players. But at this moment in time, they're not able to because I think their reputation is just too low. So let's go down to the championship then and have a look to see who was promoted to the top flight. So Barnet won the league with. Is that a record 107 points? I believe it is. Kidderminster second. Three teams on over 100 points. And poor old Dagenham and Redbridge failed to get promotion with 101 points. Dulwich, Hamlet, and go up instead of them. That is amazing. An amazing story. 
is I think Dagenham, Dagenham and Redbridge were promoted, weren't they, last season? Yeah, so they finished fourth, but went up by the playoffs from League One. Uh, I assume Barnet were the same going up. But Brackley, Hemel Hempstead and Gloucester rarely get Gloucester. Only four wins in the championship all season. Oh, Bath City have qualified for Europe. They must have won the League Cup. We'll have a look at that in a second. The League Cup and FA Cup. Intriguing stuff. So the top goals were 32 goals for Shaquille Coulthurst. Cool, cool don't know why I struggled to say that so much. So he is actually a player that plays for Barnet in real life. Uh, so yeah, they were promoted from League One last year. Let's have a look at the Barnet team. So how much money did they spend in the championship? So they spent 525k. They spent more money than some Premier League teams to try and get promoted to the top flight. Are they rich? Insecure finance. Interesting. Insecure finances. But perhaps now that they're promoted, they're, they'll, be, they'll be saved as a result of getting promoted to the Premier League. Possibly. I don't know. Bonatini playing for Telford. Wow. So they've loaned him from Wolves who are in the National League North to the championship for Telford. He scored 24 league goals, 25 goals in all competition. That is really interesting transfer. Uh, you might spot some things. If you spot some things that I don't shout out, because I'm just not looking at everything on the screen, then stick it in the comment section below. I'm sure you'll find some interesting uh, transfers that I don't spot. But let's go down to League One, which was won by Lincoln City, 102 points, ahead of MK Don. Salford failed to get promoted again. Uh, so Lincoln, wait, did they start at this level? No, they were promoted last year from League Two, of course, because that's their real-life league. So they finished second last year, and now they've gone up in first place from League One, ahead of MK Dons. Northampton go up via the playoffs as well. Hereford, Maidenhead, Bradford, Park Avenue, and Truro City relegate. I think these teams were relegated last year, in fact. Bradford, yeah, two relegations in a row for Bradford, Park Avenue. Truro City as well, possibly. I'm, I, I believe so. Yeah, two relegations in a row for them. Uh, Maidenhead? Where were they? Nope, they were in League One last year, but they've been relegated. And Hereford, I think they must have... Yeah, two relegations in a row for Hereford as well. So some of these teams will go all the way back to the bottom of English football, where they are in real life, unfortunately. It's going to be interesting to see who wins the race to the top flight from the National League North and South. Who wins the race from the Premier League all the way down back to where they started. Although that's more like losing the race, isn't it? League two then, wow. Sunderland, 120 points. A 100 goal difference. Sunderland fans, you're loving this. I know you're in league two, or you've just been promoted to league one where you are in real life. Thanks to an incredible season. I think that's two promotions in a row for Sunderland. Yes, it is. And also for Charlton as well, going up in second place, 93 points. That is their second uh, promotion in a row. Yeovil Town, were they promoted last year? No, they were in this division. And Mansfield also promoted to League One via the playoffs. With Solihull and Braintree, I think, have had two relegations in a row. Yep, relegated out of the Football League. Solihull as well. Yep, two relegations in a row for them as well. Quite big gap between them and the rest of the pack. This is where things get really interesting. Liverpool promoted to League Two with Man City via the playoffs. The two southern teams, Arsenal and Bournemouth, failed to get out of the playoffs. Bournemouth could possibly get stuck here now. They did very well to get promoted to the National League. But there's going to be the likes of Man United and Chelsea on their tails next season, I presume. Or see who's got promoted, in fact. So Bournemouth, they might not be able to get promoted. There's only two places in the National League to get promoted, remember. So it's a very difficult league to get out of. But the, the four real-life Premier League teams are topped by a long, long way. 111 points and they didn't get promoted. Arsenal only won, lost one game all season in the league and still didn't get promoted because of their goal difference with Liverpool. And then, of course, they lost the playoffs. In fact, the final... Uh, oh, maybe they were in the final. I assume they were in the final. Let's have a quick look. Playoff final. They lost 1-0 against Man City. Wow. Look at the top goal scorer, Aubameyang. So most of the... In fact, all these teams would have held on to pretty much all their players, I'm sure. Uh, oh, they look more for Barnsley. Second top goal scorer. That's pretty impressive considering. And Eden Hazard third. They played in the National League. It's just brilliant. Um, let's have a quick look. Uh, I miss there have there been any manager movements? Not from the top teams, I'd exp I suppose, because they've done so well. But they might be in the National League North and South. Let's look at Liverpool then. So have they actually sold anyone? Yeah, they have. So they actually sold Mane and Firmino to Real Madrid. So they've got rid of two of their best players. But they've brought in the likes of Willian. 
<laughs> it's amazing, really. I, I just love this. Danny Ings has gone to Southampton. He's got dropped down a division. He's not gone to the top flight. He's dropped down a division to Southampton. Mignolet has gone to a Saudi, is it Saudi Arabian team, possibly. Um, Ashley Young. What? They signed, did they sign Ashley Young last year? They did. They signed him on a free from Man United. And now he's gone to Newcastle for £1 million. That is just weird. What a weird transfer. In fact, here, here it is. They signed him in July and now I've just and sold him in uh, February. Is there no transfer window? What's going on here? I suppose that could be uh, the end of the transfer window, 5th of the 2nd. Or is that an... Is there, oh, I don't know. Maybe I've messed up the transfer windows by doing this experiment. Interesting stuff. Okay, let's have a quick look at Arsenal. Have they sold anyone? Yeah, they have. And interestingly, four of them went to Man United to try and help them get promoted to the National League. Uh, they signed Jesse Lingard from... They've signed the Gaia for 8.75 million pounds. I've broken the game. This is just really bizarre. Why would he go to Arsenal? Why wouldn't he just go to Real Madrid or somewhere like that? Or oh, this, is, this is just really bizarre. Uh, <laughs> amazing, though. And Man City, then. Who have they sold and signed? So... They, they bought Eden Hazard from Chelsea for £18.25 million. We've messed the transfer with, transfers up because no way would he go for that little, of course. But they sold John Stones to Arsenal for a low amount as well. They, we've, oh, this is just weird. Why are those players moving around so much? So Bournemouth, they haven't really done much. They have sold Nathan Ake to Man United, though, but they've not really brought anyone in. So that's probably their problem. And why they didn't manage to... Although they still did really well, of course. Let's drop down then to the National League North, which was won by Manchester United. Everton going up via the playoffs. We've got quite a few Premier League teams left in this division, division still, of course. Rochdale, Hyde and Witten Albion relegated from this division. So Man United, lots of weird transfers going on here. They, they spent £167 million in the National League North and sold £126 million worth of players. They sold Lukaku to Real Madrid. They sold Rashford to Spurs. Lingo, they, they signed Tarkowski from Burnley last year, I presume, for £15.75 million. And now he's gone to Chelsea. There's so many transfers. It's just a complete mess. Players are basically just... The teams are just swapping because they're signing players for, uh, you know, 15 million, selling players for 15 million to each other. It's just bizarre. Aaron Creswell from West Ham. It's just... <laughs> uh. Anyway, let's go down to the National League South, which was won by Chelsea and Spurs going up as well, as expected. My team, West Ham, not doing very well. Same with Watford and Crystal Palace. In fact, Bristol City and Swansea, two championship teams doing really well ahead of those teams. Margate, Merthyr and Hornchurch with a minus 162 goal difference. Obviously promoted from Tier 7 last season. Uh, they lost 12-0 against Crystal Palace. 11-1 against Swansea. Any other really big scores? 9-3 against Melbourne. That's a cracking game. But yeah, it's not ended well for her Hornchurch, has it? But that is fascinating. Troy Deeney, top goal scorer, by the way. Let's look at Chelsea, their team. So they sold £153 million worth of players. Bakayoko went to AC Milan. Zuma went to Monaco. Of course, Eden Hazard left. But they brought in Anatovic from West Ham. That's the biggest transfer yet, I think, that we've seen a, a team make. £32.5 million. Jack coming from um, Arsenal. Bizarre. Really bizarre. And Spurs going up by the playoffs, even though they had a much worse season than Southampton. So Southampton really unlucky not to get promoted to the top, to the next division up, the, the National League. So yeah, Spurs signed Rashford. They signed Ruben Neves from Wolves. But they sold Mora and Dyer and Aurea and Lamella. <laughs> Bizarre stuff. Anyway, let's have a look at the Cup. So the FA Cup was won by Arsenal. 2-0 in the final against Man United. Aubameyang with both goals. So they qualify for the Europa League. Of course, they played Champions League football last year because they won the Europa League. So we'll have a look at that in a second. How did Bath City get... European football. I'm really confused. Arsenal also won the League Cup. So it says Bath City, European football. But I don't understand how. Unless they won the Europa League. But no, they can't have done. That must be a... That is weird. Let's look at the Championship again. It says they've qualified for the Europa League. But how? Is it fair play? But I don't think it can be from the second tier of football. That is bizarre. I can't think of... Unless I'm being really dumb. But I just, they've not won the FA Cup. They've not won the League Cup. They're in the Championship. They finished mid-table in the Championship. Is that a weird bug? 
I've broken the game so much that a mid-table championship team has managed to get promoted. I might be I might be just forgetting something here. It could be, could it be a fair play, but I always assumed it was just the top divisions. Anyway, let's have a look at the Champions League, which was won once again by Real Madrid for the fifth season in a row. How boring. 3-2 in the final against Juventus. But how did uh, the likes of Arsenal get on and the other teams that to qualify? So Arsenal, I don't think they've managed to get through to the knockout stages by the looks of it. No. So we'll look at the group stages. So, Bly Spartans, zero points, minus 20 goal difference. They scored three goals, though. That's not bad at all. Alfredton bottom as well. They didn't score a single goal, minus 17 goal difference. Arsenal actually were just about unlucky well they're unlucky not just they, they're three points behind atletico madrid so they dropped into the europa league i presume and fc united a minus 30 goal difference psg leverkusen looked like they had a field day against fc united let's just have a quick look at their result 8-0 against leverkusen 6-0 against psg uh 4-0 against psg 5-0 against ah oh, poor old fc united and it seems to have affected their league form as well because they had a torrid time here they, they were almost relegated, weren't they? 16th in the Premier League. An awful season for FC United, a team that qualified for the Champions League last year. Hopefully they'll be able to use the Champions League money, though, to good effect. Let's drop down to the Europa League then and have a look to see who won it. So it was Valencia. Oh, Arsenal got to the final. They almost qualified for the Champions League again. But they have qualified for the Europa League again by winning the two cups, of course. So they've done really well, despite... They, they, didn't they fail to get promoted from the National... Yeah, they did. They're still in the National League, but they're going to be playing in the Europa League next season. Let's have a quick look at the other teams. Um, I imagine uh, there was only one, wasn't there? Oxford City. One point. They got a draw. That is amazing. Well done. I presume it must have been against Valour. Let's have a quick look, in fact. See how they got on. So, Europa League. Yeah, Valour. They drew 1-1. One, one. So, that is impressive in, in some respects, I suppose. A real-life non-league team getting a draw in the Europa League. Where's the other English team? So Chelsea did qualify as well, where they got through to the second round. They got through to the quarterfinal. They got through to the semi-final, in fact. That's where they lost against Arsenal, of all teams. We'll have a look at England in a bit more detail in future seasons, because the players will change in regards to which teams they play for. But we're going to holiday another season to the end of the 2020-21 season. So the 2020-21 season was won by Stockport County. Three points ahead of Chester, who were three points ahead of Barnet. Then there's quite a big gap down to Dulwich, who qualified for the Champions League. Alfreton finishing fifth, so they've qualified for Europe once again, who finished ahead of Billerucky. Not bad at all. Western Supermare, Curzon Ashton and Ashton United. Only one win all season, relegated with 12 points, minus 78 goal difference. Not great from them. You'll see some interesting names here. Carlton Morris, top goal scorer for Kidderminster this season. I don't think there's been any crazy transfers still yet, though, which I'm surprised by. Let's look at Stockport, who in theory are the best team. They spent £47.5 million, pounds, but they've spread it around. They've improved the team across different positions, I suppose. So this Ukrainian is their top signing. He's a good player, 17 caps for Ukraine. Uh, Bruno Martins Indy coming in from Stoke. Uh, they did sell a few players, but for quite small fees, really. Uh, Chester. So champions last year. Hopefully the big bucks enabled them to spend money. And they did. £75 million. But once again, I suppose this is the thing. They've gone from having a squad, youth team and under-18s team, full of National League level players. They're going to have to overhaul the complete team to really get to a good level. And as you can see, Adrissa Gay signed from Everton. That is a good signing. Oh, wow. The Newcastle defender coming in. Ryan Fredericks, who obviously went from West Ham to Celtic and now has moved to Chester for £7 million. Mounier from Huddersfield. Afobe from Stoke. Some interesting signings just to improve the squad as a whole. And they finished second again. So not bad season at all. Barnett. 90 points. So these are the three top teams. They spent six, much less, £16.75 million, but they have improved the team in various positions, just not quite to the same level as Stockport and Chester. Ashton United, 12 points all season. They they just didn't spend any money by the looks of it. Their reputations let them down, I suppose. Let's just look at their finance. They are rich. Now, these teams, although they can't spend money at the moment, they might eventually establish themselves as a champion championship team they will improve gradually they'll have money to spend hopefully 
and then they might eventually get back to the top flight and recover but at the moment they're a one star reputation team if we look at Stockport they're currently a two and a half star reputation team already so they're already gradually improving so that's good let's go down to the championship then which was won by Dagenham and Redbridge 107 points just like Barnet last year Lincoln City third successive promotion for them impressive stuff in fact is it the third successive promotion for Dagenham and no they failed to get promoted last year didn't they uh, Southport up oh, look at four teams on 100 points that's amazing Telford on 97 that's unlucky really Boreham Wood 90 points to finish sixth and get into the playoffs that is we've seen teams win the championship with 87 points I think in the past uh, Welling United Woken and Dartford relegated so they were the whipping boys this season let's look at Dagenham and Redbridge then what did they spend they spent only 3.4 million pounds but it's a lot more money than they'd usually spend, I suppose. Sammy o Amiobi coming in from Bolton there. So they are, they've got secure finances. Two and a half star reputation team. So they're the same as the top team in the Premier League. So they could possibly win the Premier League next season. We're going to holiday one more season after this, by the way. Quite a long video, but hopefully you guys are enjoying it. Let's go down to League One then. So League One it was won by Sunderland with 118 points. So I think that's the... Th yeah, them and Charlton have been promoted three seasons in a row. Sunderland have a three-star reputation. They might get to the top flight and actually win the league before the Premier real-life Premier League teams can catch them up. They spent £4.5 million, but they did sell £14.5 million worth of players, two of which went to Stockport. Brian Oviedo and Dylan McGuire. I'm not going to I'm sorry, I've murdered that. <laughs> uh, okay, Charlton. Let's have a look at Charlton. 105 points they basically spent nothing and they sold a place so they didn't even really they with their current team they've been able to get promoted three seasons in a row basically Hemel Hempstead Dover Gloucester and Brackley relegated I think Brackley did they start in the top flight no they didn't who's been relegated three three times I think Gloucester have yeah Gloucester started in the Premier League and have had three relegations in a row now. I think they might be the team that goes to the bottom straight away. Dover as well, possibly. Did they start there? No, they didn't. In fact, Dover, this is the first team that has been relegated. They started in League One, so that's not bad. It's taken them a couple of seasons to, to slump. Uh, Hemel Hempstead, though, have had three successive relegations, just like Gloucester. So not good news for them. Let's go down to League Two then, which was won, as you would expect, by Liverpool, who have won... Three league titles in a row now. Man City once again going up just behind Liverpool. But both of them only lost one game all season. Man City did draw against Maidenhead, Cheltenham, Port Vale, Crewe and Macclesfield, by the way. Liverpool lost against Man City. And Man City lost the other game against Liverpool. Berry go up via the playoffs. No, sorry. Berry go up automatically. Grimsby Town go up via the playoffs. Maidenhead and Bradford Park Avenue relegated again. They started in the championship. And they've had three successive relegations from that level. Eden Hazard, top goal scorer for Man City, 38 goals, Solanke 36, and then Telford for Berry with a very good 29 goals. Shakiri top average rating. Salah is still playing for Liverpool, by the way. Shakiri 38 assists. That is just ridiculous. He is destroying lower league football, uh, as is Eden Hazard. With uh, 48 goals in all competitions and 18 assists at the age of 30. Exceptional stuff. Let's just quickly look at Liverpool then. Are they still spending money? No, they're not. They've sold a lot. They sold Ballison to PSG. Will uh, their rise eventually stop or will they be good enough? I think they'll be good enough to get to the top flight even without spending money now. Let's just quickly look. So they're still rich. They're still a four and a half star reputation team. I wonder if Man City are still... Because I remember in previous experiments, some of the teams, their reputations would get destroyed, but these teams haven't. Uh, they did spend money, but they also sold a lot of players, as you can see there. So let's go down to the National League, which was won by Chelsea. 122 points, second successive promotion. Arsenal go up instead of Man United, one point ahead of them, and they go and win the playoff final. Uh, Spurs failed to get out as well, as did Everton and Bournemouth. Finished bottom of the real life Premier League teams despite getting promoted first. Uh, Barnsley, massive gap between Bournemouth and Barnsley. South End of Walsall, Solihull, and Braintree relegated again. They started in League One and they have now been relegated to the National League South with nine points. Their only win against Luton Town. Poor stuff from them. But and Bamiyang, once again, top goal scorer. Harry Kane, second, still playing for, for Spurs. Stanislas with the most assists. 
these players just ripping these divisions up. So Chelsea actually spent £95 million, pounds, but they sold £93 million pounds worth of players. Lots of interesting signings there. Again, you can always pause the video if you want to have a look at things in a bit more detail. Arsenal, similar story. They, they sold a lot. They spent a lot. Uh, and they were able to get promoted. Man United, I assume, still spending £133 million. Pounds. They did sell 113 but still £20 million. Pound. That spent, Rupert Nevers has moved from... Uh, he's moved everywhere. Now he's moved... And the same with Barkley. It's just weird. That's the key word today, isn't it? Weird. There's just so many strange transfers. Let's go. In fact, have they still got Mourinho? They've kept with Mourinho despite despite having two failed promotion seasons, really. They've only been promoted once in three seasons so far. Right, let's go down to the National League North, which was won by Stoke City. 93 points with Wolves second. Have they still got their real-life manager, or have they got rid of managers? Yeah, they have got rid of their managers, haven't they? In fact, they've had... Ah, they've only had two permanent managers. We might see some really interesting stories in regards to managers, but Wolves have got promoted as well via the playoffs. So Burnley, Huddersfield, Newcastle, Leicester, any other real-life Premier League teams in there? I think that's it. The rest of them championship teams. Tranmere, Mikulova and Morecambe relegated, by the way. Mitch Rich, top goal scorer for West Brom. Robbie Brady, top average rating. He got 30 assists as well, which is clearly the best. Let's go to, down to the National League. Oh, spoilers, I've gone too far. We've seen who's won the Cups already. But the National League South won by Southampton, who didn't lose a single game. West Ham also promoted with 88 points via the playoffs. So Watford still stuck here as a Palace, Brighton, Cardiff all the way down in 10th, Fulham all the way down in 11th, Fulham in administration. In fact, I've, didn't they go into administration before? They're in financial financial trouble. They, uh, they've they got secure finances. Maybe that's because they went into administration. It's kind of saved them. But they're not in a good state at all. Let's look at that. I mean, they've sold, they're selling players. They sold Mitrovic last season. They sold players. First season, they sold players. They're not in a good state, uh, poor old Fulham. They were re uh, reduced um, 10 points once again. So they would have finished on 82 points up in ninth place. Only two places above, actually. So the FA Cup was won by Man City. 2-0 in the final against Liverpool. The teams, there's still some similar names in there. They've still got De Bruyne. Still got, they've still got most of their team, really, Man City. The Liverpool team, yeah, there's a lot of players still there, but they've sold their best players. I mean, they've sold Firmino, they've sold Mane, they've still got Salah, but it is still a very Liverpool-looking team. It's just a reduced, it's a reduced Liverpool and Man City-looking team. Arsenal once again win the League Cup, 3-2 against Liverpool this time around in the final. Aaron Ramsey scoring two goals, they've signed uh, Philippe Anderson. To Gaia and goal for the Arsenal just looks weird. We'll look at the other trophies, like FA Trophy, at the end of the uh, third season that I showed today. Let's look at the Champions League then. Why? Real Madrid again? This is ridiculous. Oh, they're overpowered, aren't they? They are so good. Maybe they're not overpowered. I suppose if you look at past trends, then Real Madrid are likely to win it. But they've won six in a row now. How did... Did we have any... In fact, we would have had no teams get into this stage because we've just got awful teams in it this time around. Let's have a look to see how they got in the group stage. So, uh, Giesley t bottom, minus 17. Billericke actually managed to get a win. Was it against Basel? I presume it's against Basel, but Basel usually beat um, English teams, don't they? Let's have a look. So it was it was 2-1 win. That is amazing. Billericay Town with the first win. Uh, Chester. Oh, Chester, even better. They got a win and a draw. So let's have a look. So they had Atletico Madrid. They got a draw against them. That is incredible. They lost against Zenit. They lost against Frankfurt. They lost against Frankfurt again. Then lost against Atletico Madrid and got a win against Zenit. Thanks to Rio Griffiths. What a brilliant, brilliant campaign. They finished bottom still with four points, but still, it's, it's not bad. It's, it's impressive for the, only the second time. In fact, was that their first time? Their first time, I think. Stockport also, likewise, they managed to get a win and a draw. So the English teams, they were improving. They beat Krasnodar. They lost against Dortmund. Drew against Benfica. That's the first three games. You know, that could have been them going through but then they lost against Benfica, Krasnodar and Dortmund in the last three games. Let's drop down to the Europa League then where Arsenal would have got through again but Salzburg actually won on penalties in the finals. Arsenal didn't reach another final. Uh, where did they get? How far did they get? So they got through. Oh did they get out the knockout stages? 
They got into the knockout stages. They lost against Red Bull Salzburg in the second knockout round. Any other English teams? I don't think so. So, Arsenal top their group, winning all six games. Uh, where's the other English teams? Nuneaton bottom, but they got a draw. They got a draw in the Europa League. Not bad at all. So where? what about Bath City? What is the story behind Bath City? I'm very confused. They finished seventh this year, but... Uh, so they, they did get into the Europa League best placed... Maybe this was something to do with um, fair play, but they lost against Hearts in the second qualifying round. Let's move on then to the third and final season of this part two. So Chester have returned to the top of the table and they have comfortably won the league. They're obviously far superior now. Um, it's interesting. I think perhaps the middle order of the league, they're, they're quite similar now. It's only Chester that are far and away much better. Um, and then you do have the really bad teams once again. FC United only just staying up on goal difference. Terrible season from them though. But Chippenham, Oxford City and Leamington Spa relegated. Didn't Leamington do quite well in the first season? Might be wrong. Yeah, they finished. They got into the Champions League and now they are relegated. What a horrible season. Horrible. They are still rich. One and a half star reputation team. But they have been relegated from the top flight. So Chester promoted three star reputation team now. They spent £48 million this season. Their top signing was for 15.75, Janssen from Lille. They also signed um, Charlie Masunda from Arsenal. So he obviously went to Arsenal. They signed Subotic from Man City. They did sell quite a, quite a lot of players as well, as you can see there. But these are players mainly to sort of mid-Premier League teams now and a couple to Man United and Spurs, as you can see there. Southport also finished in the Champions League places. Alstead Alfreton. England has obviously lost their fourth place, unless, oh no, I think they must have. Let's have a look, Europe, competition. So now it's dropped down to third, perhaps they only get three places in the Champions League now. Qualification places, let's have a look. So England, two in the group stage, one in, the, yeah, they're down to fifth. So Spain, Italy, France and Germany all get four in the group stage. England only get two now. So that's the effect of this. All these lower reputation teams in the top flight has had an impact on the competition reputation and how many places in Europe they get. So Southport, second place with 75 points. spending. They actually sold more than they, they, they bought and still managed to finish second. Alfreton, who won the first season, they're back. They, they've done well, Alfreton. I think overall they've been the best team. I know Chester have won it twice, but they've been pretty consistent considering. Wow, they spent £141 million. They have completely rehauled their team. Look at all the players that have come in. They've sold £13 million, but that is just that is a complete real. They've sold, signed Grealish from Aston Villa. Andrew Robertson from Spurs. Oh, Robertson. So he went to live he went to Spurs and now he's moved to Alfreton three seasons late. That is amazing. So they've got Robertson of cracking signing. Uh so Barnett going to the Europa League this season. They they spent £60 million. Santarkowski from Chelsea. This is amazing. Top goal scorer Solanke, by the way. So Solanke went from Barnet, uh, from Liverpool to Barnet for five million pounds. That is a bargain because he was banging them in at lower league, and now he's top goal scorer in the Premier League. Sammy Abraham for Kidderminster signed for two point five million pounds from Chelsea. Bargain once again. Harry Wilson playing for Dagenham and Redbridge um, signed from Liverpool for three point seven million pounds. This is this is so interesting. Kimar Roof is playing for Alfredson. Oh, amazing stuff. Anyway, championship then. Now, this could be the first time that we have a, a real contender next season. Sunderland. In part three, you're going to see if Sunderland can win the English Premier League because they've just romped to the championship title with 111 points. York City go up with them. Bath City promoted via the playoffs. Good old Bath, who've managed to qualify for the Europa League, of course. Eastbourne, Ashton United and East Thurrock relegated. Ashton United go down again. My boys, Chelmsford, just about surviving comfortably surviving actually they're doing all right but let's look at Sunderland so they spent not a huge amount they actually had a one million pound uh minus one million pound net spend I suppose um so they just have a good enough team to easily romp to the the title York City second place spent 2.1 million pounds comfortably going up well actually two points ahead of Bournemouth, but not necessarily comfortably but still, very impressive season. Six teams managed to get over 90 points once again. Top goal scorer was Ugbo for Spennymore. 30 goals, very impressive, but they finished in 10th place, unfortunately. Let's go down to League One then. So League One, Liverpool, they they almost won every game. They drew against Chesterfield. 
and that prevented them from getting a perfect season. Where did Chesterfield finish? 14th. Man City lost three games, twice against Liverpool, once against Hartlepool. They also drew twice, once against Harrogate and once against Yeovil, but they easily go up in second place with um, Bromley going up via the playoffs. Uh, filed Sutton United, Woking and Dartford relegated. Eden has a top goal score again with 30 goals. Van Dyke featuring in the average rating, top of the average rating. Assists, Salah still playing for Liverpool. 32 assists this season. Phil Foden, he's... I suppose now it would. This could be good for for young English talent. We'll have a look at the England team in a bit, just to see the the players in there and the, the clubs that they play for. But yeah, Liverpool easily. Just they're just they're going to go up to the top flight every single season. Uh, they get promoted every single season, despite not really spending any money. Now they're selling players to the top flight, but they're not their best players. They've not sold Salah to Barnet, for example. They've sold Solanke, and they can replace Solanke, or they've got other players that can play up front. Man City, still spending money, but they've sold a lot. They've sold two, two of their best players, Gabriel Jesus and Bernardo Silva, to Real Madrid. But they brought in Ronaldo Vieira from Sampdoria. Decent signing for, for this level anyway, that's for sure. Let's go down to League 2. Salford City still stuck, by the way, in League One. I thought they might get up. I thought they might go to the top flight and, and win the Premier League, but it's not happened. League Two, then. Chelsea, champions with Arsenal second. And Cheltenham and Newport County also going up. Of course, there's just going to be two teams going up each season from League Two, really. The Premier League teams that get out of the National League. Now, the first regen to feature, two regens, in fact, Ashley Willis for crew. Very good. And Swatridge as well, featuring in the top goal scores. But Morata still scoring. He scored less than uh, Ashley Willis, though. Mkhitaryan, top average rating, as you can see there. Gloucester relegated again, along with Truro City. Hemel Hempstead survived, though. So Gloucester, the first team from that top flight to get relegated back down to the National League. And they might go all the way back down to the National League South in the next season, I suppose. We'll have to see how they get on in part three. National League, then Man United easily promoted. They only lost one game all season against Barnsley. Spurs go up with them. Southampton just missing out. Uh, West Ham, the lowest Premier League team there. Accrington, Blackpool, Maidenhead and Bradford Park Avenue relegated the game. But look at that goal difference from Maidenhead. Minus 124. Wow. They beat Bradford Park Avenue. They finished below them. And they beat Burton. But there's there must be some big, big losses. It's 7-1 against Gillingham. Not even against the Premier League teams. 15-0, there we go. 15-0 defeat <laughs> against Man United. They went down to nine men, though, to be fair. Harry Kane top 51 goals. 51 goals from Harry Kane. That is incredible. But what that's what you'd expect at this level, though. I mean, he's, he's, when he was playing with actual Premier League and Championship teams, he, was, he didn't do that amazing. Now that he's playing against much weaker opposition, 51 goals this season. That's brilliant. But it's what you'd expect, really, isn't it? Paul Pogba scored 25 from central midfield. National League North. Burnley, champions, easily champions, 107 points. Sheffield Wednesday go up via the playoffs. So Leicester, Huddersfield, real-life Premier League team, Newcastle, they all miss out. Tamworth, Stallybridge, Celtic and Kings Lynn are relegated. Gabriel Barbosa plays for Burnley. They signed him on a free from Inter Milan and he decided to move to Burnley in the National League North. That is just fantastic. And he's ended up being the top goal scorer in the National League North. It's just bizarre. OK, National League South. Won by Brighton, easily. 100 points, two ahead of Bristol City. Wasn't an easy win for Brighton, actually. Only two points ahead of Bristol City. Watford with 97. But there's still a few real-life Premier League teams in this division. Hendon, Kingstonian and Needham Market relegated. Top goal scorer for QPR, this chap, Lucas Numecha. 31 goals. Joel Ward featuring on the assists and top average rating list. Let's go down to the FA Cup then, which was won by Chelsea. 2-0 in the final against Manchester United. Eric Bailly playing for Chelsea and Lucas Moura as well with the goals. And the League Cup won by Liverpool this time. 2-0 in the final against Arsenal with Matip and the two centre-backs getting the goals. Arsenal down to, to nine men as well. It didn't really help, did it? Let's look at the other, uh, other competitions. So Man City, Chelsea, Arsenal, Man City, champions of the Charity Shield, Community Shield. So we can't see that. Uh, but Man City beat Stockport 2-1 in the final. 
the league trophy, trophy, the football league. This is like the the Saint. What's it called? Johnston's paint trophy, which everyone hates. So Man City beat Arsenal two 0 in the final. Udegaard scoring for for Man City and Brahim Diaz as well. But they're that they're, they're the first team teams the first team squads because they're, of course they're in League Two, aren't they? Whereas previously it would have had to be the under twenty threes that took part. But that's that's intriguing semi final. So Arsenal beat Welling United in the northern section. Man City beat Grimsby Town. Champions League. Then Juventus. We've got a different winner. Thank the Lord. Let's have a quick look then at the final. We'll go back in time and see. Uh, so wow, four 0 winning the final against PSG. But let's see how our teams got on. The English teams. We won't have qualified for these stages, will we? We need a miracle. Oh, yes. Stockport qualified. They lost against Bayern. Really unlucky. Wow, what a story. Stockport in the first knockout round of the Champions League. However, the other teams failed to qualify. So let's have a look. So Barnett finished bottom. They didn't win a single game. Uh, and Chester finished bottom. They won one game. I assume it's probably against Spartak Moscow. And Stockport going in for three in second place. Atletico Madrid, far and away the best team, but Stockport, two wins, a draw, three losses, minus goal difference, but they went through. That is amazing. Dulwich Hamlet, so they actually qualified for the uh, group stage, but zero points. Not great from them, unfortunately. But still, it's amazing to see them in the Champions League. Let's go down to the Europa League then. Arsenal have won it again. They keep winning it. They beat Leon in the final, so they qualify for the Champions League next year. The gayer man of the match in the final. That is just amazing. Any other English teams here? Man City versus Arsenal in the quarterfinal, as you can see there. Alfreton got three to the first knockout round. That's brilliant. Well done, Alfreton. They spent a lot of money, didn't they? And they've uh, managed to get through. They've reaped the rewards. Where are they? Here they are. Second place in Group H, going through to the first knockout round of the Europa League. Let's have a look at England then. Steven Gerrard is England manager. That is fantastic. Let's have a quick look at the history. So Southgate retired or resigned in 2020. He's well, he's not on the game anymore, so he's just completely left. So Gerard moved from Rangers to England in 2020, two years ago, and he's been manager since. That's amazing. So this is the team. I'm just going to have a quick look at the uh, the teams that they play for. So we've got Butland, Stoke, Pickford, Nick Poke, Pope, Nick Poke, Nick Pope plays with Sampdoria. Harry Maguire plays for Celtic. Uh, any other interesting? Rob Holdings moved to Espanyol. Ben Chilwell at Celtic. Sessegnon at Leipzig. So Celtic seem to be signing quite a few players. But there's none of the really interesting new Premier League teams that have English players. England international players anyway. Which is a bit unfortunate really. Before I go, one thing I have forgotten to mention is the stadium situation. So of course there are rules about how big a stadium needs to be in the Premier League. So I'm, I'm thinking there's probably going to be teams building new stadiums, having to play at alternative stadiums whilst those are being built. And I think that is the case. If you look at, look at this, the capacity. So I think the smallest capacity for the Premier League is about 12,500. The Chippenham Stadium built in 2020. So a lot of the teams are probably spending a lot of money on building stadiums rather than bringing players in. They are small stadiums, so they won't be as expensive as the new Spurs Stadium, for example. But yeah, I mean, Blind Spartans is currently playing at Turf Moor. We've got Chester and Southport playing at the DW Stadium in Wigan. Uh, Dagenham and Redbridge and Dulwich playing at Selhurst Park, Crystal Palace Stadium. Kidderminster currently playing at West Brom Stadium. FC United playing at, at Bol Bolton Stadium. Uh, I think Curzon Ashton are as well. So, yeah, look at the teams. Um, it's Bolton, Curzon Ashton and FC United. Now, Neaton currently playing... Is this their real stadium? Is this... Uh, no, I, I don't know which, which stadium is this. Oh, it's Birmingham Stadium. It's just the new name for it. And Lincoln City currently playing at the City Grounds. So there's a few teams that have already built stadiums. Concord Rangers, for example, 2021. It's just opened Hungerford Stadium in 2021. Barnet Stadium in 2021. But it can have an impact. I mean, I could have changed the rules, I suppose, using the editor, gone into advanced rules and made sure they didn't have to change their stadium because these teams probably won't be filling them. Let's look at Leamington Spa, for example. Uh, look at the attendance. Yeah. They're not filling the stadium, that's for sure, looking at the home attendances. But for the future, it's good. They just have to spend all this money early on. If we look at the championship, it's probably going to be a similar story. I mean, Eastbourne currently playing at Brighton Stadium. Bath City currently play, playing at Bristol City Stadium. But there are a few new stadiums in here, I think. This must be new. 
Yep, Mark Maddox, probably named after a, a legend. Uh, the Ashton United Stadium as well, built in 2021. So the stadium side of things is actually really interesting, and we will keep a close eye on this as we progress through the seasons. There we go. We'll end on that note. Thank you for watching this part two. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Part three will be out in due course on holiday another three seasons. We'll probably see the likes of Liverpool, Man City, Man United get through to the Premier League and go on and win it. But it'd be interesting to see if the likes of Alfredton, the likes of Stockport, Chester can sustain themselves in the Premier League for a long time in the future. Uh, the aim is probably just to, to do another couple parts and then in the last part, holiday quite far into the future to see what's happened. But until next time, enjoy Football Manager. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you very soon. Yeah.